conducting, you just have to ignore him, okay? Okay, he's, he's going to get these kids going, and we're going to have a good time together tonight. We do welcome you in a special way to the Weaver Baptist Church, your body of Christians who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who was born into this world in order to show us God the Father, that we might come to a living relationship with him through faith in his Son. We believe that Jesus Christ came into this world for the express purpose of dying on the cross to set us free from the guilt of our sin. And through an act of faith, we come to know him. And tonight we come to sing praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe now we're going to sing another song. We're going to come to this. I'd like to turn in your hymn book to 542. 542.
privilege the shepherds must have felt, God had chosen them to be the first to hear the glorious announcement of the Savior's birth. Picture them leaving their fields and hurrying to Bethlehem, their voices echoing that first Noel the angels had sung to them.
forgot to tell you there's no pictures tonight. <laughs> we don't take them here in the church, right? <laughs> Closing tonight, I'd like to share with you you who are here, perhaps visiting with us, and all of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, a few words from the Word of God as we close together. A man by the name of John, who was a fisherman, was confronted with the person of Jesus Christ on the Sea of Galilee, where he was a fisherman. Jesus said, come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That man, just a common blue-collar worker, walked with Jesus Christ for three and one half years, saw him crucified, and then resurrected, came to the assurance and the belief that Jesus Christ was not just a man, but he was, in fact, the Son of God incarnate. In his gospel, in the opening verses of John chapter 1, he writes this great theological section of what it means as we celebrate the Christmas season. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The word for word in the Greek is the word logos, from which we get the word logic, meaning that the very purpose of all that exists was centered in this person. He was in the beginning with God. John begins to describe the majesty of the person of Jesus Christ. All things came into being by him. Apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. And in him, in Jesus Christ, was life, and the life was the light of men. If you want to know why you're alive today, and why there is life here, and why this planet exists, and why we are here, it's because Jesus Christ eternally existed with the Father, and He made us. No competition here. <laughs> he says, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never overcome it. Resident within the heart of every human being is a desire to do what is right, and yet a struggle with sin and darkness in each one of us. The reason that we have a desire to live a righteous life and to do what's right is because this righteous person, Jesus Christ, made us. In the second movement, John begins to explain how this person came to earth. He says, there came a man sent from God whose name was John, and that is John the Baptist. He came for a witness, a testimony that he might bear witness of the light of Jesus Christ, of course, that all might believe through him. If you were a Jew, you would remember that in Malachi chapter 3, the last chapter of the Old Testament, there had been 400 years of silence. And Malachi said, before my messenger, before the Lord comes to his temple, I will send someone to prepare the way. And John came preaching a, a message of repentance, telling men to turn from their sin and to prepare themselves for the, the Messiah was about to arrive. John was not that light, but came that he might bear witness or prepare the way for the light of Jesus Christ. There was the true light which coming into the world, speaking of Christ's entrance, enlightens or opens the mind of every man. And then we read of what Jesus Christ did. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. How could we crucify the one who made us? He came to his own, to his own creation that he made. And those who were his own did not receive him. But then the message of the gospel. But as many as received him, that is, who received Jesus Christ, to them he, Jesus Christ, gave the right, the word means the absolute authority, the assurance, to become children of God, even to those who believe or trust in his name who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. They are born of God. And then John uses this beautiful phrase to explain the incarnation, the birth of Jesus Christ. The Word became flesh. This one who created everything came in a human body through the virgin birth of Mary. He became flesh and dwelt among us. And John chooses a beautiful word uses the word for a tent. He pitched his tent among us. Temporarily, he took on a human body, this Son of God who made the entire universe, who created it all, who has ruled it from the time it's been created, submitted himself and tented out with us. 
And we, this is now John the fisherman talking about him and his disciples, we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. For of his fullness we have all received in grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. What John means is he says we were Jews and we knew the Old Testament law. We knew that God made an agreement with us that if we were to keep his law, he would bless us and we would be his people. But there has not been one human being who has ever even come close to keeping the basic Ten Commandments. The law of God said that the man who does not obey the law shall be judged by the law. And he says we were waiting because the law condemned us as sinners. But when this person, Jesus Christ, arrived, grace came. You know what the word grace means? Grace means unmerited favor. Grace means God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace means what I did not deserve, I am given as a gift. Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe. A debt that I owed that I could not pay. And when Jesus Christ came into the world, he came to take our sin and his body to the cross and to die there in our place and to suffer the death sentence which we deserve. And he said when Jesus came, grace and truth came, the offer of a pardon, the offer of an eternal relationship with God by faith in him. And then John concludes this section we think of this Christmas season about the meaning of the incarnation, that God had become flesh, that we had really come to know Emmanuel, God with us. John says in John 1 18, no man has seen God at any time with these physical eyes. I haven't seen God, nor have you. But the only begotten God, or the only begotten Son of God, who now is back in the bosom or in the presence of God in the throne room, if you would, in heaven. He's there now because he's returned there, and he will return to this earth again to claim his kingdom. But he has explained him. And John uses a very technical word in the Greek language to, to, to explain his meaning. Something was covered up. We could not see God. And we desired to see him as a human race. God took his son and through the virgin birth of Mary put him in a body, a body just like yours and mine. And the father said to us, would you see me? Here he is. And he has explained or led out to the human race. The father. That is why Jesus said in John 14, he who has seen me has seen the father. Have you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you experienced God's grace? That's the meaning of Christmas. God came among us in order that he might remove the guilt of our sin and the penalty of the law and by grace issue to us a complete pardon of our sins. We receive it as a gift by faith. I trust that you know the Lord Jesus Christ and if not, if you'd like to know more about him, we have many Bible studies and personal studies in homes if you'd like to search in the scriptures until you come to find peace with God through the Lord Jesus before we close tonight, I would like to ask you with me if we might give a round of applause to all the people, to Bruce and Dean especially, and then Bruce has a presentation. I think you want to